Uh, don't watch Karate Kid for the karate. All right. No, no, watch, just watch. It's awesome. Watch, you watch Karate Kid for the philosophy. How many different representations are there? How many people are there in the world? Yeah. <laughs> you like that, Jen? It's pretty funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Jen, Jen knows. She's she's probably seen enough enough variation in like somebody that's considered a a a baseball player, right? And the many different ways in which they do things. You can you can see it. Any anybody that's ever worked with with a group of athletes, you will see there will be similarities, of course, in body types. Like if you get a swimmer, they all kind of look the same. But when you get field athletes and stuff like that, they they do things so differently. It's not fun. They got a lot of variation on things. But but that that's why. So so this is why I, I start started by constructing archetypes mm -hmm. is to give me a frame of reference, knowing full well that there's no way I can know everything. Right. But I got to start somewhere. I got to have, like I said, I got to have a frame of reference that allows me to make influential decisions. Right. And so mm -hmm. so I construct these things and I say these are the behaviors that would go with that representation. Okay. And so somewhere in the world, get this somewhere in the world, there is somebody that is like the worst case scenario, narrow. Yeah. And the worst case scenario wide. Okay. Out of what? 7.7 .7 billion people. Surely, like if we just did, did side by side comparisons of the whole world, eventually we're going to find the one person that is like, oh, wow, this is like the textbook. And then the other one is like, this is like the textbook. Everybody's somewhere in between. It just gives you a point to start, right? And then you right. do stuff and you go, what happened? And you go, that was good. Let's do more of that. Or you go, that was bad. Let's not do that again. That's training. That's how you do it, right? At its simplest representation, that is how you do it, right? So my one of my favorite movies in the whole wide world is Unbreakable because it gives you the exact representation they just talked about. So Bruce Willis, greatest actor of our time, um, is Unbreakable. He's a superhero. He doesn't get sick. He doesn't get hurt. Right. He's at the one extreme. And then you take Mr. Glass at the other end and he breaks. He's fragile. Right. We always have these extremes somewhere in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And we just use them as starting points. Get it? She's frozen, or did I freeze? How do you go beyond the starting point? Oh, sorry. You do My something here in Indiana. It's not good. How don't blame me. How do you get beyond the starting point though? Like do where something. do you go? You do some. I'm having trouble understanding then what I'm doing. I guess do something or like making sense of what I'm doing and and okay. then associating it to the representation. Okay, so you have a representation. And you have you have you have a a thought, and you say, mm -hmm. if this is what I'm seeing, this should be something that would make a change. It should influence this in some way. Yeah. And I make a prediction based on what I think is going to happen, or what I want to happen, and then I do that thing. And then I wait, and I go, well, what happened? So I just updated my information. So now by doing an intervention, I have more information to make the next decision. And so um, do you, have you ever been on a sailboat? Yes. Okay. Like the, the kind where they actually have to move the sails to direct the boat. Okay. Yes. Do you know what tacking is? No. Okay. So boats don't travel in straight lines. Or at least very rarely they don't travel in straight lines. So what they do is they have to they have to take advantage of the direction of the wind. So that's the way they move the sails. So to go from point A to point B, you see me on the screen to go this way, I might have to go that way, yep. that way, that way, that way, that way to get to the end point. Yes. Okay, that's training. Training rarely goes whoo, like that. It goes, oh, I went over here. Oh, I got to change that. Oh, we got to make an adjustment. Okay, okay, but eventually you're going in the right direction. Right. That's ultimately what you want to do. You don't want to go in the wrong direction. And that does happen sometimes too. Right. Because mm -hmm. we don't know the answers, Grace. We don't know. We have very limited predictability. What we do, um, did, did you read any Duke's book yet? Not yet. <sighs> Sorry. Have you seen the Karate Kid yet? No. <laughs> I got to fire an intern. I'm sorry. I'm too uh, busy. Okay. 
read any Duke's book. Okay. okay. Um, thinking in bets. Okay. If anybody's looking for a book to read, thinking in bets. Um, it, where where you start to understand how probability works, right? Because that's how we have to do everything. We do not know the answers, right? Yeah. You get better with with time and experience. So the experience is what allows you to manage probabilities better. You know, it's like it, when when you're when you're young and you think you're an idiot. You are an idiot. Yeah. Not that you're an idiot, idiot. It's just that you don't have the time served to, to help you manage probabilities, okay? So I'm not being insulting. I'm just making a point because I am an idiot as well. Um, all you got to do is look at my patient treatment this past week. It, I'm an idiot. Um, so, so, but you have to learn how to manage the probabilities. And, and so that by, by repeated exposures, paying attention, observing, you start to say, oh, this kind of goes with this and this kind of goes with this and this kind of goes with this. And so when I do these things for this circumstance, I tend, tend to get a good outcome. So like I said, 82% of the time, you're gonna be right. 18% of the time, you could be absolutely wrong. Both probabilities are always in play. It's just that the idea is, is like I'm more successful more often than I was before. That's how you get better. But you got to recognize that now. Let the frustration drive you for sure, right? Mm -hmm. If necessity is the mother of invention, then frustration is the father of progress. Jerry Meadows. Okay, one of my favorite quotes. Um, so, you know, not knowing is normal. Uncertainty is normal. That's the hard part. You got to get past that. You just keep doing, right? Don't hurt people. Do your safe experiments, and then that's how you move forward. Okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. I don't know. Was that gold? That was gold. I think I was rolling. I don't, I wasn't even thinking. I was just like. It was it's like just, a dad moment. I really felt like, bothered by you in that moment, I, Bill. Thank you. I am so not a dad. It's not funny. <laughs> you had me at Karate Kid, Bill. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's like, it's like, first of all, don't watch Karate Kid for the karate. All right. No, no, just watch. It's awesome. You watch, you watch Karate Kid for the philosophy, right? Hmm. You know, gosh, men who catch fly and chopstick can do anything. Hundred percent. That's, that's brilliant. 